Home to over one third of the world's population, China and India are two countries that are constantly compared to one another. Both have rapidly growing economies, partly due to bilateral trade between the two, with figures hitting a record high of $75 billion in 2011. An interview with CNC. K. J. Varma from the Press Trust of India evaluates the real significance of Sino-Indian relations. And in the past, we always focused on the the growth rate of China's economy, and now we 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 intend to focus on the quality. So, how do you think we could achieve that, like a quality economic growth? See, the, the, this is always a dilemma. This is in India too.、Uh, I think China, first of all, should take great deal of pride. Uh, in in addressing the issues like poverty, in the last say fifteen twenty years,、uh, China is credited to have、uh, uplifted about five hundred million people poor、uh, from from the levels of poverty into the levels of middle classes today. You can you can have a broad middle class in China today, is is a result of this particular development. So you cannot simply.、Uh, Uh, take away the fact that it's not China has not developed.、Uh, simply,、uh, some people in China developed, but you know, I think it is、uh, the, the development could be seen across. But maybe the certain regions have developed more, and probably certain regions have not in China. So the development、uh, aspect of it is is that you know there is a tremendous in the last thirty years,、uh, China developed too、uh, ferociously, <laughs> too fast. So. I think now、uh, there is a time to look back. I think、uh, it is a, the global economic crisis, in a way, is an opportunity also for China to convert its export-based economy to more that of domestic, more that of the one that based on domestic consumption. So the bilateral trade between China and India was largely driven by India's exports of iron ore and the Chinese imports of telecom equipment. But that mode cannot be sustainable due to China's decline of the steel sector and its aim to restructure its economy. How to solve the problem? I think India-China bilateral trade is a fascinating story by itself. It's about、uh, less than a decade ago.、Uh, it was just about two billion dollars, and、uh, in 2011. It was seventy-five million dollars. Billion dollars.、Uh, probably that was the largest, the highest we could able to go.、Uh, that was one part of the story, and the other part is that this year we have seen the decline. In two thousand twelve, we have seen a decline. Decline of、uh, now the trade has come down. I understand according to the latest statistics.、Uh, It has come down to about sixty-six billion dollars. It's a slump of nearly twelve percent. We have seen、uh, a big decline of Indian exports to China, as you say, metals,、uh, ores, and especially the、uh, natural materials. The other part of it is that、uh, uh, we have seen even China's tr- exports to India are on decline. So this is a very disquieting and a very concerning、uh, problem for both. Uh, as, with specific reference to your question about、uh, decline of、uh, Indian exports of ore and other materials to China, I think that is a big issue in India today: is、uh, environment and、uh, the problems related to management of India's natural resources. And there is a big uh, uh, most of the areas the mining problems are one too many. Investigations are going on against issues of corruption and all that. So there are several、uh, mine projects in India are on hold at the moment. So the decline is basically due to that. That yes, there is a decline in Chinese、uh, as part of it. That is no doubt about it. And also we've noticed that China has highlighted its healthcare reform and the information technology as a priorities for its next five-year plan. And what do you think that means for India's efforts for to to greater access to the Chinese market? There is a there is a very big disquieting factor, very concerning factor in India, is the the trade deficit. India's trade deficit at present with China is a whopping sum, twenty six billion dollars. 
India need to have a balanced trade with uh, all its trade partners. So I think this issue of balance of trade has been taken very seriously by both China and India. You know, we have three, four items of uh, trade that can be expanded to China in a big way. That is uh, software, that is IT. India is uh, also has emerged as uh, the next biggest uh, uh, industrial uh, rather trade uh, strength of India is pharmaceuticals. India's pharmaceuticals have done because India has to, India being a, a billion plus country itself, there is a tremendous demand for drugs. To compare to China, no doubt India's pharmaceuticals or drugs are very cheap. So the, the Indian case is that India is trying to make this particular case to China that look, you, you can make use of India's uh, expertise as well as India's uh, potential and open up your markets. I mean, this is the second case, how India's exports to China can be improved. The third, you know, the important aspect I noticed is that uh, what, what made Indian healthcare uh, a bit more successful in a, in a very chaotic democracy that what we have back home, but I think that corporate health uh, approach has really paid dividends in India. That has uh, reduced the dependence of uh, 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 on the government hospitals. The pressure of the, on the government hospitals is considerably less today because those who can afford always go to corporate hospitals, which are very well equipped. They're spread all over the country. So I think that particular experience, uh, there are several well-established uh, corporate houses, uh, hospitals in India that China can take advantage and they can come and establish that is the third area. And what do you think of the duties imposed on the, um, on the imports of the Chinese um, power equipment and the restrictions in the telecom sector? And do you think that is a way to uh, reduce the, the trade deficit? Now, nobody likes duties. Uh, nobody likes trade restrictions. But uh, China has its own duty structure on various products that, are, that it imports. Uh, but the problem is that uh, India's uh, energy sector has expanded so much and still so much loose. So there is so, such a great potential. So what India is trying to persuade is you come and invest. Instead of, instead of uh, uh, shipping your entire plant, entire equipment, I mean entire uh, equipment to the, uh, to the Indian cities, Instead, you establish this particular manufacturing there itself, and, and that is, uh, there are no duties on that. So that helps, uh, uh, probably, that makes things much cheaper. Uh, and then that also provides a lot of employment opportunities for India. And China can space out its uh, investment in China, in India, in different parts, as depending on the potential. And China and India somehow has a legacy of mistrust over, for various reasons, for example, like the conflicts in 1962 and beyond. And so how would you like to, how, how do you think this problem can be solved under the new Chinese leadership? Well, I think uh, it's, it's amazing if one, one looks at the history of the two countries. Uh, it is, uh, we are not simply ancient civilizations. We never fought a war throughout our history. Uh, and uh, until 1962, uh, when it happened, you ask me what the new leadership can do. I think the biggest uh, uh, confidence building measures that what, because there are plenty that have been already taken between the two countries, is investment. I think uh, China has developed a great deal from American and FDI uh, foreign investment in China, in, uh, in, in China for uh, uh, since 1980s. After all, what fired China's progress is because of that, your infrastructure growth and all that. And India is trying to, India has developed with uh, even as posted 8%, 9% growth rates all over this, say, past 15 years or so, without a great deal of infrastructure. You would have noticed India's infrastructure is still poor, we need to expand it in a big way. So I think uh, what India has been persuading China and Chinese investors is to come and invest in a big way in infrastructure. That is one. The second is 
in the bilateral relationship, there is a, a great deal of scope that can be improved. Uh, we need to uh, we need to take people to people contacts in a big way. And then I also suggest the Chinese new leadership visit India often. And by in order to achieve that, we like the PTI of the local media of India also plays a very important role. So what is PTI's agenda about reporting China? What is the agenda of PTI? News, news and news. We are a news agency of, uh, you know... But there's always like a preference. That's right. I mean, there is absolutely no preference. I mean, we go by the, we, 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 we go by the day's story, uh, wherever, whatever happens. And uh, the second thing is that actually PTI is a, is a very different organization compared to any other news agency is that it is neither government nor private. We are a cooperative news agency floated by the Indian, top Indian newspapers. So we have a very uh, uh, big responsibility to be very objective, to carry out with objective reporting. The second most important uh, objective that PTI, I mean, personally, I uh, look at is telling China's story to India. And uh, that's, that's our, our first, first priority to tell China's story to India in a big way. And is there any, like, what will influence your choice about what to, to report? And China is, uh, is, in the past, say past uh, one decade or so, is more of an economic story. Because you have a, a, a complete political stability in India. There's hardly uh, stability in China. So there's hardly any political issues until probably in the, to the run-up to the 18th Congress and then the Boshi law issue and things like that have come up. Broadly for us to take a good look at the political stability of China and its economic 